Good morning. Merry Christmas. Turn to your neighbor and say Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Turn to the neighbor you just ignore because you don't like them as much and tell them Merry Christmas to you too. Maybe they smell, maybe they look funny. I don't know. Maybe you're just not that friendly and haven't met them yet. But, you know, we all have people we like better than others. That's fine. How about this Christmas weather, though, huh? Does this, anybody like this Christmas weather? Who wants it to snow tomorrow and the next day and then be done? Right? Anybody with me? Like, it can snow tomorrow, it can snow Tuesday, and then bring us back to this weather, right? Praise God. Hey, we're going to jump right into it this morning. We're in Isaiah chapter 11. We're going to be starting uh, there, and we're just reading verse 1. It says this. If you don't have your Bibles, you can follow along on the screen. It says, A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we thank you this morning, God, that we can gather uh, in, in this house and worship you, and we can learn about you freely, God. We thank you for, for sending your son Jesus to earth to die for our sins, and that we can celebrate his coming today, uh, this Christmas weekend. And here we pray, amen. Amen. So this verse, we see this prophecy that Isaiah delivers to these people that have been cut down, that, that have been brought down to almost nothing. And there's this famous quote that goes something like this, when you are down to nothing, God is up to something. When you are down to nothing, God is up to something. Maybe this last year has been a really tough year. It's been a rough year. You've gone through a lot of different things. Maybe, you, maybe you've lost some people. You've been struggling with some different stuff. You've had a rough year. Maybe it's been a great year, right? The, the best year yet. But wherever you're at, I want you to know that God is up to something in your life. Turn to your neighbor and say, God's got a plan for you. He, he was up to something uh, to, in the nation of Israel, even though they were brought down, even though they were, they were uh, worshiping false gods, he was up to something in their lives. And this morning, we're finishing our series, uh, Stories of Hope, and it's been a great series. Has anybody enjoyed this series, hearing the testimonies and the videos? And yeah, you can, you can clap for that. It's, if you haven't had a chance to watch them, you can go online and you can watch them on our YouTube channel uh, and just check them out. They've been awesome stories. And as we were planning out this series, the stories of hope, we thought what better Christmas series than, than looking at all these different stories and finishing it today with talking about the story of hope uh, of Jesus Christ, right? The ultimate story of hope, that we can have hope. Um, and maybe this verse is a little different than any other Christmas verse you've heard before, but I want to read it again and show you something. It says, a shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse, from his roots a branch will bear fruit. Did you see Jesus in this text? Jesus is in this text. From his roots, a branch, a branch will bear fruit. Could it be this branch that he is speaking of is the baby that is born in the town of Bethlehem and, and is our current hope that we have today? Peter calls it a, a living hope. The author of Hebrews calls it an anchor for our souls. We celebrate this season that, that hope has come, right? We had this, this uh, musical hope for the ages. We're celebrating hope. And today I want you to show you that we can have hope in Jesus. But we see hope, it, it's an anchor. What does an anchor do? Does an anchor just sit there and like float so someone drowning can hold on to it? No, an anchor, is, it's heavy. It, it goes down to the bottom. It, the, you know, hope doesn't flow on the surface of your problems. Hope goes down deep, and it, it, it holds itself down deep so that when you are going through, through waves, when you are going through rough times, when you're going through, uh, when you're going through hell, that, that it will hold you tight. It will keep you there. In Romans 8, Paul's talking about hope. In verse 24, he says this, For in this hope we were saved, but hope that is seen is no hope at all. Who hopes for what they already have? But if we hope for what we do not yet have, we wait for it patiently. What we see here is, is this hope that is a certain kind of hope. This is a certain kind of hope. Not the hope that you might have uh, for your football team, the, the Cyclones, the Hawkeyes going into bowl season. Not that type of hope. Not the type of hope that, oh, I hope I get this for, for Christmas, this present for Christmas. Uh, not the type of hope that I hope it snows tomorrow and the next day. Not the type of hope you might have as a parent of a one-year-old when your baby wakes up in the middle of the night screaming, right? If you, maybe some of you have been there. But, but not that type of hope. We, we, we may say, I, I hope my team wins. I, I hope this happens. I hope it snows. But tossed around like that, hope means very little, really. It, it's not really, I don't really hope. I'm not hoping in it snowing. I'm not putting my hope in a team winning. More so what I mean is it would be nice if it happened, right? 
It'd be nice if they'd win. It'd be nice if it'd snow. It'd be nice if my baby would stop crying. Uh, but but it, it, it's this saying, it'd be nice if it happened. The concept of hope, though, it points to the future, right? We don't, we don't hope for something in the past. So it's not like, oh, I hope I get this, this gift for Christmas last year. Man, wouldn't it be great if I could just get a new iPad last year for Christmas? Like, we, we don't hope for something. Hope, hope points to the future. Uh, typically, hope implies, like, a vague possibility. Like, ah, oh, man, it's, it's possible, uh, but it, it kind of it seems impossible. It seems unexpected. But hope in Christ is much more than a desire, or it's much more than a wish for something, right? It, hope in Christ applies, implies deep assurance and a firm confidence about future things. Romans 5, 5, it says that hope, that, that hope in Jesus does not disappoint. Our hope in Christ, our hope in the future in, in God, it does not disappoint. We can hope in all sorts of things that will leave us disappointed, but hope in Christ does not disappoint. Today we're talking about this certain type of hope, a hope that, that has to be learned the hard way. How many know sometimes you, you have to learn something the hard way, right? Anybody ever learn something the hard way? Some things can only be learned the hard way. Some things can only be developed the hard way. It takes getting a speeding ticket to learn like, okay, I shouldn't speed, right? You heard my dad tell a story a few weeks ago about me getting a ticket in high school for rolling through a stop sign. $195 later, I learned the hard way, don't roll through stop signs, right? It, it takes learning things the hard way. It takes eating too many cookies at Christmas to realize like, okay, don't eat so many cookies, all right? It, some things uh, we, we learn the hard way. We, we learn because it, it's tough. Uh, there's this story of this uh, the, the student who, asked, who was asked this question, uh, who is your favorite teacher? And the student said an answer quick, and then, then he said, well, really, what do you mean? Do you mean uh, the, the teacher I like the most or the teacher I learn the most from? How profound is that statement, Right? How come, how come sometimes we can look at school, we can look at these different seasons in life, world, is, do you mean the one I like the most, the one I learn the most from, but we don't get it in our spiritual life? That the seasons in our life that are the most fun aren't necessarily the most fruitful. And the seasons in life that, that we learn the most from aren't necessarily the ones that we would choose to go through. There are some seasons that, that will cut you down. They will take off your branches. It, it's, it's a pruning season, but in the pruning, there's a promise. You may be going through a pruning season where you're cut down and you, you're down to a stump, but there's a promise. God is up to something in your life. We celebrate this season that hope has come into the world. But we need to remember not only that it has come or who it came through, but how it came. And the first thing we see is this, is that hope is hard. Hope, it, it, it had to be hard. Right, this is kind of left out of our, our nativity scene over here that it's difficult, right? It looks beautiful and it looks peaceful and, and it, it, it's, it probably doesn't smell bad over there, at least I hope it doesn't smell bad. But, but hope, the, the whole Christmas story, it was hard. Uh, it had to be hard for Joseph to believe Mary, his future wife that he had not yet slept with, that, that the baby inside of her was from God. It had to be hard to believe that she was a virgin that was pregnant. It had to be hard for Mary to look people in the face and say, this baby inside of me is from the Holy Spirit. That, that had to be hard. But not just hard for people to believe, but physically, right? The fact that God chose this way to come into the world through a womb, right? That, that's a difficult situation. Uh, the, the fact that he, not only did he come into the world through this impossible situation of this womb, but that he didn't even make hotel reservations, right? You would think he'd the savior of the world's coming in, at least get a hotel room, maybe like a, a nice king-size room, something, maybe even Airbnb or something like that, but, but something, right? At least pack a tent, Mary and Joseph, but no, like in a, in a manger, it, was, it had to be hard. But to sanitize this, we miss the significance of it. To miss the struggle of Christmas, we miss a window into the way that God works. The, the, this whole Christmas story shows us how God works. And we, we miss it so many times. We think that God says, when God tells us, I'm gonna do something in your life, that he's, gonna, he's saying, I'm gonna do something in your life, so because I'm gonna do something in your life, it's gonna be easy. Well, that's, that's what we think, but it's not. It, it has to be hard. When we look at the Bible, we see this true, that, that, that God choosing the hard way, that's his, that's his go-to route. That's what he does all the time. Do you have time for me to go through the whole Bible showing you what I'm talking about? Yeah, all right. Set your clocks. We're gonna read through the Bible, and I'm gonna show, I'm just kidding. But quick look, we see that Jesus, after he was born, he had to go to Egypt with his parents. Why? He, he was hiding from Herod, right? Herod wanted to kill all the babies. 
You think we have bad leaders in our country, right? They ain't going around killing all the babies because they're afraid that they're going to take their, their job. But, but we see that he had to go into hiding. He picked Moses to go to Pharaoh to say, let my people go. He said, you're going to go to Pharaoh and you're going to tell him to let my people go. And when you tell him, he's going to say no. Right? Why would God tell us, why would he tell Moses, hey, go to Pharaoh and say this, but after you say it, it's not going to work? Why would he say that? Because it has to be hard, right? If, if Moses went in and said it and, and was like, hey, let God's people go, and Pharaoh's like, okay, you, you, you can have them. Pharaoh, or Moses would like dab on Pharaoh and like think like, oh, I'm very convincing. Like I must be a great communicator. He, he knows it's, it's all me. But it, it had to be hard. In other words, if it wasn't hard, you would think it was you. If it wasn't hard, you would think that, that you were able to do it. If it wasn't hard, you would trust in yourself. You'd say, oh, I can, I can get through this. Oh, I can do this on my own. I did, it, I did it there. I did it here. It was easy. I can do this. God says, I'm going to allow some things in your life that are going to be impossible for you, that are going to be so hard for you so that you can know what Mary knew, that through God, all things are possible. By the time the Israelites got out of Egypt, they come up to the Red Sea, right? And instead of going around it, the normal, the human way to do it, God's like, I know, I know we could go around it. That would, be, that would be what most people do. But you know what? I'm going to take you through the sea. I'm going to take you right through it. Lift up your staff and the, the waters will part. Right? He, he does the impossible. He likes, we, we could talk about David and Goliath, how David used a slingshot. God could have used an armed, a big, strong, armed soldier to, to take down Goliath, but, but it, instead he uses something as silly as a little rock so that we can see that it was God that did this miracle. He, he did it through Gideon, who had 32,000 soldiers to go into war. And he says, I know you could fight with 32,000, but I'm going to let you get down to 300 so that you can know that I am with you. We, we see that, that time after time he cuts people down to a stump. We're, we're cut down to a stump so that we can trust in him, so we can put our hope in him. And maybe you are at a time in your life where you are cut down to a stump. And you've been relying too much on, on the fruit from the tree. But this is a season in your life where God wants to prove to you the root system that he has put in place. Prove to you that, that the roots are there, that you can have hope because there are roots. Sometimes we have to learn things the hard way. Jesus, he, he didn't come into the world in an easy way like we talked about. He could have come in like floating on a cloud, right, with everything given to him. But he, he, he came in in weakness to show in your weakness he is strong. We, we see that it has to be hard, right? I have one of Maren's Christmas presents up here today. I got her a bouncy ball for Christmas. No one tell her. But we see, uh, we see bouncy balls, what do they do? They bounce, right? It's called a bouncy ball. They named it very appropriately, right? Bouncy balls, they have the ability to bounce, right? And, and you can go around bouncing it, but what happens when we change the surface? What happens when I take one of Maren's beautiful Christmas pillows and I try to bounce it on one of her pillows? It doesn't, it doesn't work, right? Because the, the, the surface it bounces on has to be, three of you know what the surface has to be, right? The surface it bounces on has to be hard. And maybe that's why the situation in your life has been so hard. So God is showing you, because he's showing you, I have a bounce back in you. You're going to bounce back from this. That's why he, he, Jesus came into the world and he was put in a borrowed grave because he's saying, you can put me down, but you can't keep me down. I'm bouncing back. Guess what? The harder the surface, the higher the bounce, right? There, there may be hard situations, but you have a bounce back. You have a comeback. We look at it as a punishment, like God's punishing me because the situation's hard, but God's not punishing you. He's preparing you. He's preparing you because after that bounce, after you hit the ground, after you hit the hardest part, you bounce up even higher. He's preparing you. You've been cut down for your comeback. It has to be hard. So we see the first thing is this, is that it had to be hard, and the second is that it had to be hidden. It had to be hidden. When God really likes something, he hides it. Growing up as a, as a pastor's kid, uh, around Christmas time, uh, we would get all these gifts of many baked goods and chocolates, praise God, right? It's just the greatest thing ever. And we would have all, these, all this food at our house, and, and, and in the, now that I'm a pastor, it's in the office and at the house. It's just hallelujah, right? But when I, when I would find something, because you have to taste test everything, um, when I would find something that, I would, that was all right, 
I would just leave it there on the counter and just kind of take some when I want it just for to be good. But when something, when I found something that I really loved, you know, like the, the peanut butter stuff, you guys know what I'm talking about. Yeah, when I found something I really loved, there were certain places that I could put it in the house where my brothers and my sisters and my parents couldn't find it, right? Because there's some things that are just too good to be left out. There's some things that are too good to be left out. We have the story of Isaiah. He's 700 years out from the birth of Jesus. And now now we have today what Isaiah was hoping for. We have what, what he was hoping for. And I wonder, do we take it for granted because we have it? Do we take this whole thing for granted because we have it? Think about, think about when you lose something that you have, right? Something that's important to you. Uh, it actually happened to me this morning. I woke up early to, to work on my, uh, to kind of go over my message a couple more times. And I was going to swing by the office because I left my AirPods here. So I was going to swing by and grab my AirPods and go and work on it at the coffee shop. And uh, I, I knew that I had left them on my desk, right? I knew I left them. You'll hear the story in a second. I go into the office, and there, I look at my desk, and they're not there, right? So I start going through all my drawers. They aren't there. I open up my backpack, check where I always keep my AirPods, right? I, I, I go through my truck, like all through my center console. I'm searching. I'm searching. I even go back home and look through my workout bag. Like, that's how much it was on my mind. I'm like, where did they go? So, and then I get to the point where I'm like, someone must have stolen them. They must be stolen. They're, they're gone. So I'm like, fine, I'll just, I'll just go without them. And, and I, I drive to Starbucks, right? And the whole time I'm just thinking like, man, where are they? And what do you know, I get to Starbucks, I open up the main pouch of my backpack right where I know I searched, and there they are sitting right there. And I'm like, praise God, right? <laughs> but how many times do, do we do that where, where we get so used to just being around God, we get so used to this that we don't really think about it. And then when it's gone, then it's like, oh no, what happened? Do, how, how is your hope? Do you hope throughout everything, or do you just hope when you really need him? Do you just hope when you're, when you're worried that it's not working out? Because Paul said this, it's harder to hope the more you have, because when you have it, you lose your ability to hope. It's harder to hope when, when we have it, right? How is your hope right now when you have it, when, when things are good? But because we start to hope in what we have, we forget how to hope when we don't have it. We, we forget it. Hope for reconciliation, hope for provision. When you're down to nothing, I, Isaiah said you can see it in the roots. You can see it in the roots. But the roots, that's the part of the tree you can't see. That's the part that's, the part that's beneath the surface. But that's where all the action is. As long as the tree stays rooted, there's hope for, for a new beginning. There's hope for more. It has to be hidden. We see that Christmas came in a whisper. It was quiet. It wasn't some loud moment. It was hidden. It, it, it came in this, in this quiet moment. And, and we see that Jesus, he, he was quiet at first. He had spent the first couple of years of his life in hiding from Herod like we just talked about. It was hidden. It, 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 was, it was quiet. And maybe you have been in a season of, of hiding. You're in a time in your life where, where you've been hiding. But maybe God is trying to show you the nature of of true hope, the kind that is an anchor, the kind that gets down deep, and it, and it holds on when things get tough. Some of you, you have hope when good things happen, but how is your hope when God seems silent? How is your hope when he seems silent? How is your hope when there's no fruit on the tree? It's in, it's in those seasons. Do you mean the, the teacher I like the most or the teacher that I learn the most from? Some of, some of God's greatest work comes in our life when we couldn't feel him. When, 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 when we can't feel him, that's where he builds your faith. He has to hide your faith beneath your feelings. That's where hope lies, beneath the surface, beneath the feelings. That's where it lies when, when you get a bad report from the doctor, but somehow, some way, you still have hope. How is your hope when, 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 not, when you're not just, or what am I trying to say here? I messed up something in here. I started in the next paragraph on my notes. But we see uh, that we don't just have hope when we're healthy. We don't just have hope when there's a bonus. We don't just have hope when we know how we're going to make it through. Why? Because I don't know, have to know how. I know who. I don't, I don't know when. I know who. I don't know what. I know who. Because I have a hope. Worship team, you can come on up. 
maybe this, this Christmas season, this last year, some of you guys have been going through some things and maybe you're in a point in your life where you thought that, that God was gone. Well, hear me, he's not gone, he's preparing you. He's, he's putting your roots in a deeper place. He, he's digging your hope deeper. There's this quote that says this, I used to think disappointment was the enemy of hope. I don't think so anymore. I think disappointment is the doorway to deeper hope. You have to learn hope the hard way. You put your hope in a person and you find out they weren't meant to hold your hope. They, they, they weren't meant to. You put your hope in a bank balance and find out your bank account can't hold your hope. You put your hope in a possession and you realize this wasn't meant to hold my hope, right? Things, they rust, they go bad, something new comes out. We can't put our hope in these things. There are some of you here today and you have allowed your hope to be in things in people, in money, in success, in status, and has left you broken and has left you feeling empty. And God has brought you down to a stump, but he's brought you here today to show you there's a shoot coming up from the stump. There is a new beginning happening in your life. God wants to give you hope, but you, it doesn't just happen. You have to take a hold of it. You have, you have to grab it. You have to, you have to hold it yourself. Faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen. Hear me, you can't have the fruit of fulfillment without the branch of Jesus Christ. You can't have the fruit without the branch, and the branch is Jesus. That's why he was born. He is the branch, and you don't have to leave this place disconnected from God, disconnected from hope. You don't have to leave this place down to nothing because a shoot is coming up from the stump. Hope is being born. God has a new plan for you. This is the day. Today is born to you in the town of David, a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. Will you take hold of this hope? You can stand all across this room. Praying for people today who, who have not yet grabbed hold of this hope, or maybe at one point in your life you had it and you've just kind of fallen away from it. Things have come up and you've just been disconnected from God. And maybe not in a, a big crowd like this, but if, if I was sitting down with you face to face, just us two talking, you might tell me that, yeah, at one point I was really connected with God, but I don't know if he's real anymore. I don't know if he's there. I don't, I don't know if I can put my hope in him, but hear me, God is here and God has a plan for you. A shoot is coming up from the stump. There's more to the story. There, there, there's more that he has for you. And today, you, you, maybe you're feeling like it's time for me to reconnect to God. It's time for me to put my hope in him again. I put my hope in people, found out that didn't work. I put my hope in things, I found out that didn't work. I tried to, to do all these other things to fill that hole and none of it works. But today you're saying, I'm ready to put my hope in Jesus. And if that's you today with those people looking around and you're saying, today I, I'm putting my hope in Jesus. Maybe it's a situation you're going through right now where you're really struggling. Maybe it's saying, you know what, I, I'm coming back. I haven't been uh, following Jesus, but I'm coming back. Or maybe you're saying for the first time, I, I'm putting my hope in Jesus. I'm giving my life to him. If that's you and you're ready to put your hope in Jesus today, whatever the situation may be, would you just raise your hand saying, that's me. I put my hope in Jesus. I've been cut down to a stump, but I'm putting my hope that that, that shoot is coming forth from the stump see hands. Here's how I want to close today. I just am going to pray for you, and we're going to go into a song, and, and during this, if, if, you, if you need prayer, if you made a decision today, if whatever it is, if there's just something going on that you want prayer for, we're just going to open up the altar space at the front and just declare that, that hope has a name, right? And his name is Jesus. Jesus came not just to, to have fun, not just to show us all these cool miracles he could do, but to give you hope, to give you life, and we're going to celebrate that. Dear Jesus, we thank you today, God, for every person here, that you have us here on purpose, God, that you have a purpose for us, that you have a plan for us, God. I pray that today we would put our hope in you, that we wouldn't put it in other things, that we wouldn't put it in possessions and people and anything else, God, but our hope would be in you and you alone, and that we would trust the process, God, that we would have a bounce back to our spirit, that we would know that you are up to something, even though we may be down to nothing. God, I thank you for those who raised their hands today, responding, accepting you into their life, declaring that, that they're going to put their hope in you. They've tried other things, God, and I pray that today that we would search after you. What better time to celebrate these people responding than, than Christmas weekend when you came to earth, God. And we, we thank you and we give you the glory this morning. We worship you in your name we pray. Amen.